So let's begin with our pre-service meditation. Simply allow yourself to anchor in and become aware of your breath. Simply noticing the rise and the fall of the chest and abdomen as you breathe. No need to try to adjust or control the breath. Just simply being aware. this awareness of the breath deepens, also become aware of any tension or stress in your body. Scan your physicality from your feet to your legs, your pelvis, your abdomen your torso, your arms, shoulders, neck, head. Just simply being aware of any tension or stress that you may have noticed in the scan. No judgment. Just simply be aware of it. Be aware of how it feels. Be aware of the degree of discomfort or stress. And as this awareness deepens, also become aware of simply noticing any emotional stress, angst, upset. Simply allow it to have space to be recognized What you may notice is when we find the emotional angst or physical stress, when we notice it, when we become aware of it, there are times that that awareness causes the breath to become more shallow. So in this awareness, be mindful of is my breath being affected? Am I breathing more shallow when I give stress recognition? When I give depression space to breathe, does my breathing become more shallow? Simply become aware of it. Once again, no judgment, just awareness. It is only by becoming more aware that we can shift and grow and evolve in consciousness. There is no need to tug of war. 
There is no need to suppress or deny. But in this space right here, we give everything room to be what it is. To be seen, to be recognized, to be acknowledged. Especially those things that we tend to want, to eliminate, deny, remove, but simply breathe into them. And as we continue to become greater, more and more aware of our breathing, our bodies, our emotions, we give that which is our mind, our consciousness, greater space, greater depth, greater breadth to expand, to shift into that higher state of being. Where we are in balance, we are in harmony. To that higher state of awareness where we understand and we recognize that in any moment, with any breath, freedom, liberation, emancipation from judgment, criticism, condemnation, stress, anxiety, worry, pain, can be achieved. At any moment, with any breath, we can choose to shift our focus both internally and externally. At any moment, with any breath, we can choose to be, to live, to love at a higher vibration, at a higher state of consciousness, at any moment, with any breath. It is also with any moment, with any breath, that we bring in the awareness that there is happiness, that there is joy, that there is health at the root of our beingness. Not as an external condition where we need something or someone to make us happy. But that the truth of our beingness, as an individualized incarnation of the infinite I am, every part of our DNA Every cell, every fiber, every atom, every molecule, every aspect of our being, physical, emotional, intellectual, spiritual, it's all God. It's all good.
but it is in our awareness that we identify with this truth. As our awareness expands, as our recognition expands, we become more and more aligned with the truth of our being. So in the midst of recognizing stress and breathing into it, we also recognize that the answer to that stress exists in the same exact breath. That in this feeling of angst, depression, worry, fear, as we breathe and give it space to be recognized and honored for its truth, we recognize that in this breath there is also healing, restoration, peace, harmony, power. We give ourselves space to be the full expression of our divinity through our humanity. Not either or, but both and. And in the both and, there is only the one, spirit, life itself, living itself, in, through, and as all that we are, breathing itself right here and right now. And so in this breath, we identify what quality or trait, what attribute, what characteristic, what experience do we desire to experience even now. If I want to experience more happiness, then I must choose If I want more peace, peace of mind, peace in relationships, then I must choose. I must choose to think differently. I must choose to speak differently. I must choose to feel and to act differently. And so in this moment, in this breath, identify that quality, trait, attribute, characteristic, feeling that you, an individualized incarnation of God, in this moment, what are you choosing? What quality of God are you choosing to be? What characteristic of spirit are you choosing to experience? What path of the one are you choosing to walk? Allow that to rise to the forefront of your mind as you breathe. Noticing any thoughts or feelings that rise with it, anything that wants to challenge and say that you're not worthy of, you don't deserve, 
You don't know enough. You're not enough. You can never be enough. Simply noticing. Giving it space to have its say, but recognizing that no matter what it says, it's not true. And that at any moment, that voice, like the volume on a remote control, can be lowered. It can be put on mute. And ultimately, like any TV show, it can be turned off. So those thoughts of not good enough, those feelings of not worthy enough, the fears, choose in this breath how long they are permitted to control your mind. to control your words, to control your feelings, to control your actions. Recognizing that when you have had enough, choose differently. In any breath, choosing love. Any breath, choosing I am worthy. Choosing any breath to be that breath that says I am am that I am. There is one life, that life is God. This breath I choose to let that one life live itself in, through, and as all that I am, all that it is as me. For there can be no separation in God. That which God is, is. And what I am is what it is as me. What you are is what it is as you. But it is in each and every one of us, it is our consciousness that chooses to recognize, to be aware of, to live from that awareness. So in this breath, choose. In this breath, be aware. In this breath, simply be. Infinitely knowing that this, that God is, is all there is. We know that even when this meditation comes to an end, that which it is as us does not end when the meditation ends. That that which God is, 
this one life, this one mind, the thing itself, called by many names and yet is far more transcendent than any name that could ever be used. That which it is, is always now. So at every part of service, God is. At every part of our day, breakfast, lunch, dinner, God is. Whether we are reading, watching the news, God is. God is always. And so we allow that which it is to be what it is, even now, knowing that as this meditation comes to a close, the breath continues, the one life continues to live itself, the one mind continues to think itself. Love continues to be love in expression, in, through, and as each and every one of us. So we simply breathe and become aware. And as we are ready, we prepare to come back from this meditation, preparing for our pre-service music, and then we prepare for service and all that it entails, knowing that we have chosen this moment, and in choosing this moment we have chosen ourselves. We have chosen to be right where we are, to live, to love, to evolve to do what is ours to do, infinitely God living itself, and we breathe, and so it is.
Welcome, 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 welcome all. Hmm. Welcome to the Center for Spiritual Living Greater Baltimore's virtual service. Hmm. Hopefully you can see me now. My name is Tracy Rhymes and I will be your host for today. That amazing meditation that we just had was from our senior minister, Dr. Raymond Anderson. He is our speaker for today. Mary Ann Marcelek will be our practitioner on duty and our awesome and amazing sign language interpreters are Deidre Wilcher and Raina Kerr Permetla. At this time, I ask that Mary Ann lead us in an invocation. Good morning, everyone. <clears throat> this is what I know. I know that there is one heart, one mind that surrounds us, that binds us together, and connects us in love, joy, and peace. I know that spirit is living within each and every one of us and it is surrounding us and binding us together. I feel so grateful and blessed to know this truth, to feel this connection, to further this connection, to be alive in this beautiful spring, and to know the new beginnings are happening in nature. I am so grateful to be here this morning to be at one with each and every one of you, to be connected, to be supported, and to be loved and to be loving to each and every one of, of us. I know that I and everyone is beaming out love and light and concern and joy to one another and to all the people that we love and care for. I'm so grateful to have this virtual Sunday service to reconnect. I'm grateful for the wonderful musicians, for all the people who made this service possible. Thank you very much. We are so grateful. To our senior minister, Reverend Dr. Raymond Anderson, we are so excited and enthusiastic to hear your talk this morning. We are so grateful to have you. And right here and now, we open up our minds and hearts to really be open to listening to the message, to embody it in the coming week, and to shine our light and love outward to everyone, and to love ourselves most importantly. So we are so grateful to be here together and to be so ready to hear the message. So grateful for everyone who has participated. And I release this prayer knowing that we are moving forward with great hope and enthusiasm and love and support. So open to new thoughts, new beginnings, a new way of thinking as we enter spring. I release this prayer knowing it is done and say with me, and so it is. And so it is. Thank you, Marianne, for that amazing prayer. Now, as we join for our fourth virtual service, 
and we see the news reports about the pandemic and we see so many, hmm, so many around the world that are adversely affected by COVID-19. As a spiritual community, as a spiritual community, hmm, we gather together. We stand affirm. We st excuse me. We stand firm, anchored to the spiritual truth, and remember that this is not a time to give into fear. Let's breathe that in. Worry and fear do not strengthen. They weaken and compromise the immune system. So now is a time to re-fortify and sanitize not only our hands, but our minds as well. Let's breathe that in. Do what is health conscious to the best of your ability and follow the recommended protocols that the medical community has offered while also doing what we are called to do spiritually. The LGBTQ affinity group is hosting a virtual service. Hosting a virtual spiritual tapas for members of the global LGBTQIA2 plus community. Hmm. If you are LGBTQ plus or an ally, we would like you to share the announcement. Excuse me. We would like, we invite you to gather for a short 25 minute spiritual tapas that will include a brief meditation, a power talk, a testimonial, and new thought perspective on transcending labels. And if you want to join, want to join us or want more information, you send an email to Reverend Raymont, R E V Raymont at CSL Greater Baltimore dot O R G or Raymont Anderson at Raymont Anderson dot com. Today, you're also invited to join in the after-service visioning process guided by licensed practitioner, Dr. Ronnie Ellington. Stay on the Zoom call and you will be added to the appropriate group that will be visioning or prayer. Spiritual mind treatment and prayer works. Spiritual mind treatment and prayer works. We as a community, we continue to treat and move our feet accordingly. We are knowing the truth for everyone, everyone, everyone around the planet. And the CSL Greater Baltimore practitioners are available if you want a specific prayer, be it for yourself, for your family, or anyone else. Anyone. You just send the prayer request to info at cslgreaterbaltimore.org. So now... I would like to introduce our musicians for the day. Soul Pajamas started as a duo in 1999, 
featuring song, singer songwriter Dan Johnson and jazz vocalist Aaron Johnson. Known throughout the New Thought movement, Soul Pajamas primary haunts are unity and religious science, which now are centers for spiritual living, as well as Unitarian and other churches. The songs are empowering, positive, and sometimes spiritual, but never dogmatic or exclusive. Soul Pajamas conclude, continues to perform their original music in a duo format at New Thought Centers. If you'd like to learn more about them, do visit their website at www.soulpajamas.com. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much for that beautiful selection. Now is that time of service where we prepare ourselves for the message. And Marianne Marcelek is going to lead us in a meditation that will assist us with preparing ourselves to receive a message, the message from Reverend Ray. 
For those who are new to our center, we will have a guided meditation followed by an affirmative prayer. So let's get comfortable in our chairs, feet on the floor, however it is, however it is comfortable for you. Close your eyes or gaze downward and breathe slowly and deeply until your body relaxes. Just let any tension in the shoulders or the neck just flow down your arms and kind of leave your body through your fingertips. And as you relax, release your thoughts about anything or anyone, even yourself, and know in this moment that there is nothing you need to think about, no place to go, nothing you need do. Let yourself surrender to the freedom that is yours in this sacred space. And if a thought occurs to you, let it drift away and dissolve into the wonderful, just greenish golden light of an acceptance and unconditional love. Together now, let's take some deep cleansing breaths and release any tension or discomfort. During this time when spring is emerging and new life is springing forth, Ask, have I been planting seeds of joy and peace? Have I been planting seeds of compassion and loving kindness? During this time of new energy and new beginnings, ask, Am I willingly and consciously planting seeds of joy and peace, compassion and loving kindness in this moment and all my moments? Especially in these trying times, let us pause and help ourselves nourish and calm the body and mind and attain freedom and transformation. We will follow a guided meditation by the great teacher Thich Nhat Hanh. Breathing in, I know I am breathing in. Breathing out, I know I am breathing out. Breathing in, I see myself as a flower. Breathing out, I feel fresh and happy. Breathing in, I see myself as a mountain. Breathing out, I feel solid and strong. Breathing in, I see myself as still water. Breathing out, I reflect all that is.
Breathing in, I see myself as space. Breathing out, I feel free. Breathing in, breathing out. Breathing in, breathing out. Breathing in, I am blooming as a flower. Breathing out, I am fresh as the dew. Breathing in, I am solid as the mountain. Breathing out, I am firm as the earth. I am free. Breathing in, I am water reflecting what is real, what is true. Breathing out, I feel that there is a space deep inside of me. I am free, I am free, I am free, free from all danger. Breathing in, I am strong. Breathing out, I am healthy. Breathing in, I am safe. Breathing out, I am protected. Breathing in, I am at peace. Breathing out, I am whole and complete. Let us contemplate these words for a few moments. Let us pray. And this is what I know. God is all there is. God is the divine source of all goodness and the wild abundance in my life. I am surrounded by nature and I take full advantage of the coming spring. I am so grateful to have the nourishment of nature of spring all around me. I am so grateful for the many walks that I, that we are taking and feeling the calm and the sense of freshness of, the, of spring. I feel solid, I feel safe, I feel protected. And in nature's arms, I can release the stressors in my life. I can release the anxiety, the stress, any fears that I have. I can let them dissolve into the arms of nature, beneath the trees, looking at the new daffodils, and feel and know the promise of spring. I see the wholeness and completeness of nature reflecting back to me my, our wholeness and completeness. I feel the vibrant energy and the vibrant health of the natural world around me. And I take heart. I am encouraged. I am able to change my focus away from my cares and my fears and see them as just shadows, illusions, 
and I turn toward the truth, as I, in particular, look to nature and see the promise of spring, of life coming alive before me, before us, and know the truth that God is present in everything and in everyone, and the wild abandon of nature, of the flowers, of the leaves blossoming, just tell me a million times that all is well. That we can get through this, that we are united, that we are supporting one another and guiding one another. That I, we are safe and protected in the arms of the divine. I know calm, I know clarity. As I contemplate these truths, as I contemplate nature, as I do my spiritual practices of meditation, of prayer, of spiritual reading, I am free and fearless. And I feel so supported by this community, by our minister, by the beautiful music. This is a beautiful coming together in love, in spirit, and in support. I am so grateful to know these truths, to feel and embody the unity, the connection, the coming together. And I am ready to express it outward to my community, to offer help where I can, a helping phone call, a smile or a wave to a neighbor as I pass them by on my daily walk. It all adds up. Every kind word, loving kindness, ripples out to the larger world. And I know that as we pray as a community, this is a huge beacon going forward to encourage the entire world to see hope, to see past this virus and see us return to a new, wonderful, healing reality of coming together, of knowing that we are a world that is, that our planet is, has shrunk. We are all interconnected. We are close and we are becoming loving peoples. The paradigm is shifting to love, connection, and a new way of seeing ourselves and one another. We are all one. I feel so blessed to know this, to have this teaching as a foundation during these trying times. And I feel so encouraged to look forward to new bright beginnings. I release this prayer knowing it is done and say with me, and so it is. And so it is. And so it is. Thank you very much, Marianne, for that powerful meditation. So, it's that time of service where we get reminded, re-energized, and homework that we are all encouraged to do. So, as I uh, am relieved of my duties right now, I give you Reverend Dr. Raymond Anderson, Senior Minister, CSL Greater Baltimore, and I ask that throughout the service, as I have done in the past, please send him some energy, some energy, and some love. Thank you. Hello everybody! So, since you're not here uh, with me in, in the flesh right here in the room, what I would like everybody to do is, whether it's Facebook or Zoom, type in the chat box and just share, like, how are you? Is my head singing this thing, Tracy? Because I don't know. Because I adjusted it for you. Okay, cool. Just making sure. So, like I said, share how you're doing, how are you feeling, share it in the chat box. Um, today is the first Sunday of April, 
And as we heard from Marianne in her amazing in-service meditation and prayer, it's springtime. There's spring in the air. Ooh, yeah. There's love everywhere. everywhere. Yeah, so wow, spring. Wow. What comes to your mind when you think spring? I remember there used to be a time where spring for me, it was, oh, that's allergy season. Like I never thought about any of the things that Marianne mentioned about nature and beauty and spring meant particularly three things. Allergy season, chocolate, well, I guess go with four, Jesus, and the Easter Bunny. Ah, such fond memories of a troubled past. So, here we are now though, April 5th, the year 2020, and we're talking about bright beginnings. The specific theme is taking responsibility for self, community, and the world. And I would like to say, or sort of ask a question, just think in your mind for a moment. We hold these truths to be self-evident. Now, we know where that's from, we know what follows that, but I want us to start thinking about what truths do we hold for ourselves that are self-evidenced? Meaning, it is the evidence that we see for ourselves based upon how we show up. Because depending on what that evidence is, we really, really, really may want to, you know, be in tune with this idea of what it means to take responsibility for self, the world, for others, for everything, including literally, literally, the world, meaning nature. How is it our responsibility to make sure that Mother Earth is cared for? So just have that in, have that somewhere in your mind as we go through. My specific title for today is Bright Beginnings, which is the general theme, and Starting Anew. What does it mean to have a bright beginning and start anew? With spring, Passover, Easter, and Ramadan, we are offered once again a time to reset our intentions. Ah, time to reset our intentions. Focus on the divine to choose freedom and liberation and to resurrect. I was like the phoenix from the ashes. Now is a time for us to potentially be invited to do all of this or any one of these would make a huge profound shift in our consciousness. But let us pause for a moment and have a brief history lesson. So you've heard the word Passover before and I'm not going to go through reading all of this. It's there for your basically education so anyone who, you know, if you want the slides, you want to see more of it, you have it. But this idea that Passover being a major holiday or holy day for our brothers and sisters who are of the Jewish tradition, that there's this idea of what it meant for them, because it's not just about the liberation from the Egyptian pharaohs and that rule. Like, it's more than that. We're going to get into it. But I want us to just be mindful that Passover is not simply a holiday, a holy day that happens in spring. Like there is a religious, a spiritual, and a metaphysical component to how this can help each of us shift, change, evolve, and grow. Now, specifically, one of the things that tends to come to our mind is this idea that in the book of Exodus, there's, you know, Moses. I'm sure most of us, if not all of us, have heard that name, Moses. And Moses was given the task of freeing the Israelites, you know, freeing the Hebrew people from Pharaoh and Egyptian rule. And as part of the sending of the plagues, one of the things God was sending the, the angel of death, the spirit of death, the messenger of death, per se, to come through and basically wipe out firstborn folk, right? 
And one of the things that we're told to do, what to prevent the passing over of this angel, this, this plague, was they were told to take the blood of a lamb and put it over the doorway, hence the image that you see. So they would sacrifice the lamb, take the blood, put it over the doorway, and then as the spirit came through, wherever that blood was, the spirit knew, pass over that home and go on to the next one. Which means that the Egyptians would greatly suffer this plague because they weren't Hebrew. They didn't know the tradition, so they none of them had blood on their doors, you know, the doorways, etc. So the angel came through, and this was one of the many plagues. For us, who may not be Jewish, who don't particularly practice this tradition, you may ask, well, Ray, what does that have to do with me? Well, what it has to do with you is, so let's three steps back and pause, and understand that in Exodus 12, I'm going to read this for you, in Exodus 12, in Isaiah 31, 5, this idea of Passover means to protect. God was protecting the people. It means to have mercy on. God was having mercy on them. It means to save. God was saving them from both the angel of the spirit of death in the plague and saving them from the Egyptian rule under Pharaoh. Okay? But the noun, Pesach, refers to the sacrifice or the whole holiday of protection when God protected the people from the destroying angel. Okay? Pause and hold that in your mind. Protection. Okay? Now, if I were to ask you, though, what are you doing to protect your consciousness from any messages that would destroy, denounce, or decry you from knowing your truth? What are you doing to protect or to save your consciousness? Now, you may ask, well, I don't understand exactly what you mean. Okay, so here you are watching the news. You're hearing how the, the in, infected numbers, those who have contracted and are testing positive, you hear how that number rises of COVID-19. You hear how the, the number of those who have transitioned as a result of it, you hear how that number is rising. You hear about the, the, the number of ventilators that are, like, where are, blah, 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 and you hear all of this. Is that message destroying your faith, your confidence, your trust, your hope? What is that message doing to your consciousness, to your thoughts, to your feelings, to your cells in your body? And what are you going to protect so that you are able to stand in what we practice as truth? Moving on. Where can you be more merciful with yourself and those that you encounter regarding where you and or they... What? what? That's right. Oh, where you and or they may be at any given moment. So what are you going to be more merciful to yourself? where you are in this moment, to someone else where they may be in this moment. So, for example, suppose you are anchored and grounded and know the truth. There's only one power, and that presence and power is God itself, living, moving, and having its beingness as me. And then you go visit a brother or sister, a sibling, a congregant, a somebody, and they're in the, in the space of, Oh my goodness, it is the end of the world. There are zombies, and there are things, and oh goodness, ah, ah, ah. And that's where they are. And, and it annoys you. Because you want them to be in the same space you are. You don't want to hear them mumble, grumble, cry, and complain. You want them to, where, when, how can you be more merciful with them where they are? And not just them. I'm talking everybody. I'm talking every political leader, every scientist, Every practitioner, every congregant, every neighbor, every parent, every minister, every, I'm, where, when, and how can we be more merciful, giving them space to experience what they are experiencing, feeling what they're feeling, thinking what they're feeling, 
while at the same time protecting ourselves from lowering our vibration, sinking in our consciousness, devolving, but we are able to stay higher and elevated and more awake and aware, and in so doing, potentially give them greater space to now upgrade as well. When, where, and how are you being more merciful? And then lastly, where can you save yourself from situations, thoughts, etc., that are harmful or potentially harmful to you and your consciousness? Where, how, when can you save yourself from them? Well, first you've got to identify what they are and what they're doing to you. So once again, suppose you're watching the news and you're seeing stats rise. How can you save yourself from what that may be causing you to think or feel? You're on Facebook and somebody says something, whether it's a Facebook troll or whatever it is, and they say something and it triggers you. How, when, where can you save yourself from what that is now doing to you? See, it's important for us to understand everything has a metaphysical something. And so, while we may not specifically practice the tradition of Passover, we can practice, we can glean from the wisdom, from the truth that is embedded right, it's right there in Exodus, in Isaiah, like the truth is there. How do we extrapolate that and then apply it to our own lives where it's not, oh, that's their tradition, that's their practice, that's their thing. No, there's only one power, one presence, one being, this being all that is. That's God. So what applies for God in one space must apply for God in every space. So what's true in this for another yeah, we hold these truths to be self-evident. We hold this truth to be evidenced to myself that I can protect, be merciful, and save myself, my consciousness, my health and well-being. I am able to anchor and ground in truth to such a degree that all is well. And that that message of destruction and pain can pass over my experience. Not only is Passover referencing this idea of the angel of destruction and death passing over, skipping over houses and families, but Passover is also a time of celebration. What does it mean to celebrate? Why are you celebrating? Do you have to have a reason? Like, no, for real, like, do you have to have a reason to celebrate? For example, my birthday was a couple of weeks ago, March 25th. I celebrated. My daughter-in-law's birthday is this coming Monday, and they're going to celebrate. Tracy's birthday is several months from now, and we'll celebrate. New Year's Day, people celebrate. Christmas, celebrate. Easter, celebrate. Anniversaries, celebrate. Valentine's Day, celebrate. Like, you get my drift. We have select dates on a calendar that all of us choose as this is the right and perfect day for us to hold a celebration. Why can't we just celebrate because it's Tuesday? Why can't we just celebrate because, you know what? I woke up, I wanted to wake up at 8. It's when I set the alarm to wake me up and I woke up at 7.59. I'm celebrating. I'm celebrating because I look out the window and the, the Canadian geese didn't poop on the, on the driveway. Celebrate. Celebrate no poop today. Like, I can celebrate simply because grass is green. I can hear the wind chimes. The sun will come out tomorrow. No, I'm not going to sing, Tracy, though I'm tempted. I can celebrate simply because. So, 
Do we have to have a reason? Or can that reason be God is and what it is I am? Om Tat Sat, I am that I am. Aham Brahmasmi, I am Brahma. Om Tat Sat, Tat Tavam Asi, you are it. That which it is, is you. Isn't that reason enough to celebrate? Because there's only one life, that life is God, and it is living, breathing, and having its movingness, beingness as you. If that's not a reason to celebrate, then there is no such thing as a reason to celebrate. So, what are you willing to celebrate about your life right now, today? Are you willing to celebrate? So, we've got this idea of to ruminate consternate. I didn't say constipate. Although that could go up. That, yeah, that actually could have gone up there. Meditate and liberate. So this idea of because we know, we know, we know we may be one of we in fact may be one of them. Are you someone who overthinks things? So they said yes, but did, did they really mean yes? Did yes mean maybe? I mean maybe they, they said yes, but they didn't want to say maybe, so they said yes. And well, But I mean, but what if they meant maybe? What if they said yes and they really meant no? Like they said, yes, we want to hire you for this new job. But what if they really meant no, but they didn't say no because, they, like, they make, uh, uh, heck. How many of us overthink or know someone who overthinks? We allow ourselves to ruminate on things for days, weeks. Years, we're still thinking about that. June 10th, 1983. I was a junior in high school. I remember that day very clearly when. What, 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 dude, why, why, why are you still ruminating on this day, eons ago, when you were embarrassed in the cafeteria? because you spilled your milk on you. Why are you still? But we do it. Are you an overthinker? What tends to drive or be the dominant types of thoughts that you ruminate about? Do what ifs about the world, the pandemic, money, etc. tend to drive you into a tailspin of consternation? I'm going to put this in there. It's not up there. Do you tend to allow yourself to become so bogged down and stuck, in other words, constipated, well. with ideas and thoughts that do not serve you? Are you in some way unable to release the waste of thoughts mm. and anxiety and tension? and fear-mongering? Is it stuck in you? Are you a person who says that they want to engage in spiritual practices, meditation and such, and yet when the time to really practice comes, for some reason, the old ways remain? Like it's same old, same old, it's business as usual, it's just, that's what it is. So, you want to change, you have the tools, I know I can meditate, I can pray, I can do this. But when it comes time to do it... Well, you know, um, I'm going to go make a cup of tea instead. But when, when, when... No, I'm trying to figure out, like, when do you do this, though? And then lastly, are you ready to step into a new level of liberation by committing yourself to the bright beginnings that you deserve? Are you ready to shift into this new idea of what it means to have a bright beginning? To rise from the ashes like the phoenix? So there's a few new thought perspectives that we, you know, we're going to discuss. But this idea of, here's a guy looking out the, the train or the bus to his right and there's a wall. And other guys looking out the window to the left and there's a panoramic view. This one's miserable because all he sees is a wall. Like, dude, get up and go to the other side and look out the window. Here we have one person looking at this image, and to them it's a six. The other one sees it from their perspective, and it's a nine. 
Life is all about how we see things. It's not about the things themselves. It's about the perspective, the perception of how we see them. Sometimes all we need is just a new thought perspective. The path of liberation and brighter beginnings begins with one step. And that one step is, what is oppressing you? So let's go back to this idea of the Hebrews, the Egyptians, and Passover. They were being oppressed. The Jews were being oppressed. What is oppressing you? What ideas, paradigms, experiences are you wanting to have pass over you? What are we holding in our consciousness regarding this idea of oppression? For example, are you feeling oppressed because of the current circumstances with the pandemic and the physical distancing? Does being oppressed by the government, society, religion, etc., mean any one of us must be oppressed 100% of the time? For example, well, let me finish. Or is there a difference between being oppressed and feeling oppressed and experiencing oppression? Meaning, we know right here, right now, in the United States of America, there is this thing called patriarchy that as a culture, oppresses women. We know that there is this thing in the United States of America where there is this idea of uh, white supremacy and that concept, paradigm, consciousness oppresses people of color. There is this heteronormative that oppresses people from the LGBTQ plus community. Like, we know that these, these exist. But the question is, if you are female, right here, right now, are you oppressed? Are you experiencing oppression right now, even though the patriarchy isn't in your house, in your room right now? Am I experiencing the effects of white supremacy and discrimination and racism right now as I'm speaking to you? Or is this idea of, keep in mind, being oppressed, feeling oppressed, and experiencing oppression? I have to identify, am I oppressing myself by the thoughts that I'm thinking, even when I'm not experiencing it from something or someone else? We have to get clear on what is the source of this oppression that we want to be liberated from. And the oppression could be anything. It could be drugs and alcohol. It could be comfort eating. It could be any number of things. But the idea is, what is it that is oppressing me? Where is it coming from? What is the effect? And how do I shift it? Then lastly, how many of us engage in, spirit, in a spiritual pilgrimage? That idea to some sacred site within our own consciousness. How many of us share our gifts? How many of us celebrate our lives? So again, how many of us go within to the sacred site within? We do a whole bunch of pilgrimages to, we'll go to Mecca, we'll go to the Wailing Wall, we'll go to a Shinto shrine in Japan, we'll go to the Great Wall in China, like we'll go to various sacred sites, Stonehenge, Giza and the pyramids will go, but how often do we go to the sacred site? We believe that heaven is within and that we experience it to the degree that we become conscious of it. Am I willing to go to that place where I know that heaven is? Jesus said the kingdom of heaven is within. Seek ye first the kingdom of heaven and all else, all these things will be added unto you. How many of us are willing to go within? And having done that, then how many of us share those gifts? How many of us are ready and willing to be in a state of celebration? Albus Dumbledore, a great friend of mine, said, Happiness can be found even in the darkest of times if one only remembers to turn on the light. How often do we walk through our kitchen, living room, dining room, stumbling in the dark, not being able to see the ottoman, not being able to see the shoes, and we trip and we stumble, but the light switch is right there. How many of us continue to stumble and trip over things in our consciousness that our mother, father, grandfather, grandmother, teacher, somebody said that they put this obstacle in our way, 
And rather than turning on the light, we continue to stumble and bump over it when happiness can be found, even in the darkest of times, if we remember, click, turn on the light. Because happiness is our innate, eternal state of being. God is happiness itself. We don't need something to be happy except the recognition that I already am it. It is already living itself in me. I am happiness personified. And the moment I recognize that and start to live from that awareness, then I recognize that in this breath, happiness is a choice. I can choose to feel it, choose to be it, choose to express it. But I have to be willing to flick the switch and recognize that at any moment it's already available. So there's this idea, we're going to apply something for a moment, specifically related to what we're talking about, because we say change the way you look at things and the things you look at change. Okay, so there's this idea that there is something that's there and it really doesn't matter what it is, it matters more of how do we see it. So someone shared this graphic on Facebook and the, the actual originator of it is anonymous, so I don't know Whoever you are, wherever you are, thank you. Because the idea is, what do I want to be during COVID-19? And we have the fear zone. Do I want to be someone who, I grab food, I grab toilet paper, and I grab medication, even though I don't need it. But I'm grabbing it because I have to hoard just in case. Is that who I want to be? Do I want to be someone who... I get mad easily. Mm. Is that who I want to be? Or do I go to the learning zone and I want to be someone who, ah, I'm someone, I want to be someone who can identify their emotions, to be more emotionally intelligent. I choose to be someone that I recognize that we are all simply doing our best. We are trying to do our best. Yoga said there is no try. That says try. Tomato, tomato. Am I someone who recognizes that every person is in this moment where I can be merciful of the person who hoarded 3,000 rolls of toilet paper? You ain't got but one butt. You got one butt. You live in the house by yourself. You got one butt, two booty cheeks. You don't need 3,000 rolls of toilet paper. But can I be merciful and recognize that it's their fear that is making them do that? That's the learning zone. Boom! Then there's the growth. The spring zone. The place where there is new growth. And I choose to be. I think of others and see how I can help them. I am empathetic. I am an empath and choose to express my empathetic abilities with myself and with others. I thank and appreciate others. Yes, the EMT workers. I know that you're still out there. Yes, person at the grocery store would mask and yet yeah, thank you because I appreciate growth zone. Where do we choose to experience this thing? Do I choose to see spring as allergy season? Knowing it's going to make my nose run and it's going to and I hate and the crust in my eyes and I hate spring. Fear zone. I need to go get some Benadryl and some uh, allergy-free stuff and some... I... <laughs> Fear zone. Or do I choose to be in the growth zone and say, you know what, I'm choosing to recognize that if my, if my body experiences this thing called allergy, one, I don't have to claim it as my allergy. You know when my, when my allergies flare up, I don't want it, so I'm not going to claim it as mine. When this body temple experiences this thing called allergies, I choose to still be in a place of happiness, joy, and wonder. I choose to do what I need to do regarding this, but I'm not going to let it prevent me from living my life. What are we choosing? When we change how we think about things, then the things that we think about change. Are we willing to make that shift? 
Ernest Holmes says in the Ernest Holmes Papers and the Ideas of Power. Now suppose there were at the center of the being of each one of us a clear channel to the infinite. Now, I, I, I want to I reiterate, because if you were with us last week, then we remember the, the, the passage, the quote from Voltaire that said, God is a circle whose circumference is nowhere, whose center is everywhere. So the center that Holmes is talking about is everywhere. Now, suppose there were at the center of the being of each of us, which is all of us, a clear channel to the infinite, which is forever pouring out through us, in us and as us, in a unique way, because it never does two things alike, nor does it ever repeat itself. Each one of us is a unique, individualized expression of source, completely unlike anyone else, other than the fact that we are it. What changes in our life when we recognize that exactly what it is, we can open the channel to understanding ourselves in a completely new way, experiencing ourselves in a completely new way, expressing ourselves in a completely new way, when we are completely open to how the infinite is being the infinite, in, through, and as each and every one of us. The Talmud says, every blade of grass has its own angel that bends over it and whispers to it, grow, grow. Metaphysically speaking, we know that a, an angel is a message, a message of the divine. Do we hear? Can you hear that message saying right now, Ray, grow, grow. Do you hear the message right now that says, Sue, grow, grow, Tracy, grow, Nancy, grow, Frank, grow, Marianne, grow, Dan, grow, Aaron, grow, globe, earth, grow. Are we able to tune in to hear and feel and sense the entirety of creation saying to itself, grow? And are we willing to step into that when we hear? So your homework this week, your call to action. Journal what it means for you to be oppressed. Just jot down, what does it mean for you? Specifically you. Not what is oppression at a global... What does it mean for me, Ray, to feel, experience, what does it mean to be oppressed? Two, explore what it means for you to be emancipated or liberated from all forms of oppression. You know, the we believe statement, the declaration of uh, principles that we in CSL adhere to, statement number five, we believe the ultimate goal of life to be a complete freedom from all discord of every nature. We believe in a complete emancipation from, a complete liberation from all discord, all discord of every nature that includes oppression. And we believe that this goal is sure to be attained by all. What does that mean? What does your life look like when you are now liberated, emancipated from oppression? Third, explore where you may be oppressing yourself today. Where in your consciousness today are your thoughts, your paradigms, your ideas, your baggage weighing so heavily on your back that you hunch over like Quasimodo or you hunch over like Atlas carrying the weight of the world because your own consciousness is bearing down on you so heavily. Fourth, find one thing about you that you will celebrate this week. Find one thing about you that you will celebrate this week. For example, was there something you thought, and this is just in general, was there something that you ever thought that you could not do? 
but you overcame the belief and you accomplished it. You didn't think you could get through college, but you did it. You didn't think you would get that job, but you did it. You didn't think you would ever get married, but you did it. You didn't think you'd ever, but you did it. You didn't think you'd get your license, but you did. You didn't think, but you did. And then, backtrack and say, okay, I can celebrate this accomplishment. Step back. Can I simply celebrate me for having been someone, for being someone who breathes, who thinks, who feels? But find at least one thing about you, not anything that's about anybody else, but about you that you will celebrate this week. Today's affirmation, I'll read it first, and then if you feel so motivated, inclined to then speak with, feel free to do so. I experience the freedom to be love, and I rise to be all that it calls me to be. <clears throat> Together, I experience the freedom to be love. And I rise to all that it calls me to be. What does love call me to be? I rise to that. What does love want to be as me? I rise to that. I rise to the occasion to allow agape, unconditional love, love without bounds. I rise to the occasion to let it Breathe this breath, speak this word, think this thought, move these hands. I allow love to be what love is going to be as me. And in this moment, we now prepare to welcome back our musical masters for today. So sit back, relax, and prepare to enjoy the musical magic of soul pajamas. Thank you, Ray. You were wonderful, as always. Uh, so this song, uh, you will all know, and its message is so beautiful for this time. It's a really wonderful way to rise up on ourselves as we're at home. So we can't do this song as we know it will be, and so we will hear it inside of our hearts. Watch your music. Also, this song is an honoring of uh, the great Bill Withers, who uh, passed, passed yesterday. So, we'll all miss his music terribly, and, and what a great contribution to the world he made. All right, here we go.
See, if everyone knew how to sign, even though Tracy, even though Tracy didn't un, unmute me, you would have understood me by signing. But anyhow, three steps back. Put your hands together this moment right here, right now, for the magical musing, musical gift of soul pajamas. Once again, yes, yes, yes. Sometimes in our lives, we have to shift our own consciousness. Come on, shift your consciousness with me right now. We are the ones who are here to shift and change the planet, and we do so by trusting, by leaning on one another, knowing that we are an interdependent, not independent, we are an interdependent expression of the one love, life, God. Why wouldn't we lean on each other? Why wouldn't we trust one another? Why wouldn't we serve and help one another? Every time you say thank you to anybody, you're saying thank you to God. Every time you say, you're welcome, you're telling God you're welcome. Why would we not trust and lean on one another? So, whew. Okay, so here we go. So, gotten into a lot of conversations with a lot of people about this whole idea of virtual service. Because right now, in the conditions of where we are globally, this is a thing for the present moment. And a lot of people have forgotten that tithing and donating, or as Tracy specifically used this particular terminology yesterday, the administrative aspect of what it takes to make a center go, make it run, make it grow, make it operable, well, money comes into that. So we understand that money is energy. We understand that money is, is, is not, or it's not the source itself, but money is how source is showing up. And so how do we actively participate and engage in the laws of circulation? And people are a little confused about how do I do that now while it's virtual? Well, let me tell you, you've got several possible options. Go to the CSL Greater Baltimore website and there are two possible ways where it says giving. Go there, click giving. It will take you to a PayPal link. You can pay via PayPal. You also have the option of writing a check and sending it to Sue, which means you can contact our treasurer of CSL Greater Baltimore, Sue Monahan, by emailing her at sue at B-I-W-T dot com or B I W T S S M at AOL dot com and by if some for some reason that's still a little bit challenging, message me on Facebook, send me an email, text me or call me and I will put you in touch with Sue so that you are still able to tithe and donate where you are spiritually fed. And so in this moment as we anchor into what that even means with our prosperity declaration, let's simply come to this space of knowing that what we are giving, what we are offering, is far more than what is in a bank account. It's from the consciousness of wealth, prosperity, opulence, and abundance that we give. It's from that consciousness that we create. It's from that consciousness that we invest in our spiritual community, where we are spiritually fed. So together, wherever you are in the world, simply anchor and let's recite this, declare this, together. Let's know this truth to be self-evident. I joyfully, consciously, and gratefully participate in the law of circulation. I trust in the spiritual principle that says, as I sow into my beloved community, I demonstrate my awareness of standing not only in the flow, but as the flow itself. As I sow of myself, my time, my treasure, my talent. I demonstrate my support and engagement in my community's vision, mission, and purpose. I actively give as a demonstration of manifesting, of reaping, the harvest of a world that works for all. 
So right here, right now, recognizing and knowing that every tithe, every donation, every aspect of consciousness that is being returned unto God, being returned unto spirit, being returned unto source, knowing that right now it is actively circulating and swirling in the ethers. It is swirling from bank account to bank account to CSL Greater Baltimore. It is swirling from CSL Bal Greater Baltimore out into the world. It is swirling. It is moving. It is shifting. It is growing. It is creating this beloved community to be such a beacon of light and wonder and power for the Greater Baltimore area that this energy is rippling out across the world. That as we know, there is nothing that needs to be healed only truth to be revealed, knowing that CSL Greater Baltimore is a lighthouse that shines truth, knowing that it is a sacred sanctuary where people can come in from the, the traumas of the world and receive comfort and love as this beloved sanctuary offers, that it is a, it is a place of great power, of great people who recognize and know their own divinity, the magnificence of their being, knowing that this is what it means to stand not only in the flow, but as the flow itself. We anchor, we know, and we are grateful. And so it is. So as we prepare to end service, because I'm going to get ready to do the closing prayer, the benediction, I want to remind us Make today great. Find something about yourself to celebrate. Now, do the homework. It's, it's extremely important to do the work. No matter how challenging it is, no matter how awkward it is, engage in it each and every day. So today, find something to be grateful for. Today, make it awesome. If it's not already feeling awesome, then, then recognize you're awesome. And just about the fact that you're awesome makes it an awesome day. And know that after service, if you want prayer with one of our practitioners, stay online. And Tracy and I will either ask specifically, are you here for prayer? Or are you here for visioning? Because we're going to separate you into various breakout rooms based on that. If you want to do visioning after prayer, you can also let us know that and we'll switch you into that room as well. So Dr. Ronnie, you know, as she's leading visioning, you know, you'll just be added in to that process. So make sure that if that's what you're doing, when you are put in the breakout room, be on mute until such time as she instructs you to do otherwise or asks you to do otherwise. So just stay on the line and, you know, we'll, we'll check in with you and see what's what. So at this moment, let's anchor ourselves and breathe and simply allow ourselves to be breathed, resting in the ease and grace of this virtual process, knowing that the pieces as they are falling into place, as they are rising into place, as they are placed ever so confidently and gently in their right and perfect places, that this process called virtual service ends soon. And I say end soon, meaning that the world of experiencing a pandemic knows the truth of its being. That everyone in the world, every scientist, every doctor, every political leader, every citizen, everyone is leaning on one another. Not leaning on their own understanding, but leaning on the collective understanding of the divine, of truth, of love, of health, wholeness, well-being, and completeness. And that as we do that, this thing called COVID-19, this thing called pandemic, fades away and is simply something that is now in the history books for us to reflect and remember when. So right now we gather virtually, one mind, one accord, and, and we, we go through whatever it is we must go through to protect Zoom, to protect Facebook from any people who want to distract to mess up, to confound or confuse. So in this moment, we have patience that if a password is needed, a password is needed. We have patience that says if we must, if we must have a moment of silence to wait for things to click, there is a moment of silence. We, we simply step into this as a temporary experience 
of a culture that evolves, a planet that evolves, a people that are evolving into greater and greater levels of awareness of knowing our divinity, knowing that what we are is the eternal, infinite, and ever-expanding consciousness called by many names. And so we breathe, allowing, we breathe, accepting, we breathe, and recognize, we breathe. Knowing that this prayer is already in the mind of God, it is already in the law, it is already there. I simply surrendered and allow the law to do what it does. It acts accordingly. And in much the same way as the graphic earlier that, that Tia actually shared a, an updated version, that even after the learning zone, there is the act zone. The zone of action. Now, how do I act accordingly? How do I treat and move my feet? How do I, knowing myself as a being who is whole, perfect, and complete, how do I show up as that? Knowing that this is what the law is acting upon, I allow it to do so. Knowing that the entirety of all of creation right now is putting everything in place, every test tube, every petri dish, every mask, every ventilator, every tithe, every offering, every Zoom link, every laptop, every light, every camera, Every aspect of creation right now is aligning, conspiring, creating, evolving, and shifting for the good of all. Knowing right here and right now, in the law, in the mind of God, in the heart of God, in the heart of God as each and every one of us individualized expressions of, we hold the vision of a world that works for all. And so we act accordingly. Knowing it is done, I surrender it to be a world that works for all. Together we anchor this, we declare this, knowing that truth for ourselves and knowing that truth to be evidenced to self in every form that self shows up. It is so. And so it is. Amen. Everyone, blessings. Have an amazing day. Once again, for those who want prayer and are staying for visioning, stay on and we will move you into the right and perfect breakout group accordingly. Thank you very much. Namaste. Be well. Be blessed. Love you.